Hi everyone, my name is Maureen Kelly and I'm a paramedic. And today we are going to be reviewing the topic of BLS basic airway management. A uh, couple things that we will review quickly um, are ABCs, moving on to oxygenation and ventilation. Next, we'll discuss basic airway adjuncts. And finally, we will go over blind insertion airway devices or BIADs. Uh, primarily focusing on the king tube and how to properly insert the king tube and the indications for its uses. Um, as we all know, the bread and butter of all EMS are the ABCs, uh, airway, breathing, and circulation. Today, we will be focusing on the A and the B, airway and breathing, save circulation for another day. Um, Oxygenation and ventilation. Obviously, uh, we want to properly oxygenate a patient via proper ventilation techniques. Um, I do have a BBM here, which we will get to shortly. Um, next, uh, we will review basic airway adjuncts, also known as OPAs and NPAs, oropharyngeal airways and nasopharyngeal airways. Um, these are basic airway adjuncts that ensure the, uh, the proper opening or patency of a patient's airway prior to the necessary need for a blind insertion airway device such as a King tube, which does both um, keeps the airway open or patent and allows a provider to properly ventilate and therefore oxygenate a patient. Um, PPE that you will need for any of these skills, uh, you'll obviously need a pair of gloves, um, always with airway calls and nose calls in general. Uh, we will be using uh, eye protection. Additionally, um, especially within today's times, um, you'll want to have some sort of um, face covering, be it a surgical mask or uh, an N95 mask. Um, just for the purpose of this video, I will not be using one of those just so that you can hear me properly while I am demonstrating. Um, so let's begin. Um, I will go ahead and get my PPE on. So generally, when you get to a call such as, we'll say, a cardiac arrest. Um, you will get there and your firefighters will already be, hopefully, oxygenating and ventilating a patient uh, with a BBM. Here we have the BBM and I have my oxygen here behind me, which may be out of view of the screen, but we'll Need to make sure that the BVM is obviously hooked up to the oxygen. Be going generally between 10 to 15 liters per minute. I'm going to generally just turn it up to 15 liters per minute. Uh, we will use the CE grip to properly uh, secure this to the patient's face as well as hold it to the patient's jaw. So this is the initial. Uh, ventilation of a patient, obviously. Um, things that can obviously assist with this are the insertion of your OPA and the insertion of an NPA. Uh, OPAs are these uh, adjuncts right here. They come in various sizes. Um, they are measured from the corner of the patient's mouth to the base of the patient's ear. Um, they are inserted as such. Like I said, just ensures the patency of the patient's airway. Um, generally, the go-to uh, for most people is going to be an OPA. You also have an NPA, which is measured from the patient's uh, nose to the base of their ear. Um, they can both be inserted at the same time, used simultaneously. Um, when you insert the NPA, you want the bevel tip towards the septum, turn it in as such. Um, you can use two NPAs 
and an OPA at the same time. Uh, again, just ways to ensure the PVC of a patient's airway. Now, moving on to the bread and butter of what we are talking about today. Uh, as I said before, a blind insertion airway device. Uh, there are several forms on the market. Uh, you may have heard of an eye gel or a combi tube. Uh, primarily here in my agency, we use a king tube. Um, as with the OPAs and the NPAs, there are several sizes uh, of the king tube. They go based on a person's height. Um, so if we pick this yellow one up here, um, we have green, which is a size two. We have an orange, which is a size 2.5. We have a yellow, which is a size three. A red, which is a size four. And a purple, which is a size five. Um, most often I found with adults, we generally tend to use a size three or a size four. Um, a size three, is for an individual, and sometimes if you need a reference, it will either be on the packaging uh, or everything is labeled on the tube. A size three is for an individual that's generally anywhere between four and five feet tall. Now these are sizing references. Obviously everybody has a different size airway. Uh, it may be the case that you insert a three and it is too small for an individual. Or it may be the case that you go by the measurements, obviously a size four is going to be anybody who's between uh, five feet and six feet tall. Um, may be the case that you insert a size four and it is too big and you need to size down. Um, King tubes come in packaging like such. They also come packaged uh, in, a, in another package um, where, I'm trying to think of the word, where all the air is sucked out, like a freeze-dried package. Um, but inside these package, you have everything that you need for the insertion of a king tube. Um, you will obviously have your king tube. You will have your 60 to 80 cc syringe. You will have your lubricating jelly, and you will have an OG and oral gastric tube. Um, so for this mannequin here, uh, we will just guess that they are an individual uh, from four to five feet. So we're going to try a size three king tube. And what you want to do is you want to test the equipment prior to inserting the airway. So there are bulbs on here which secure the airway into each. individual. They generally hold about 60 cc's of air. You can see now that it is blown up. We are testing to make sure that there are no leaks inside of the airway adjunct. Um, so we have an NG tube or an OG tube rather here. Um, we want to lubricate the OG tube prior to insertion into the king tube, and we want to lubricate the king tube prior to inserting it into the individual. Uh, for this demonstration, I'm not going to do that because these have been used previously and are already lubricated, as well as the airway to this mannequin. Um, like I said, you would lubricate your OG tube, and you will then insert it into the hole that is in the back of the K2. You will preload it down to the bevel tip of the K2. Same again, you would lubricate maybe the front and the back of the K2. You will then come over to our mannequin. I'm going to go ahead and take this NPA out. Now, some people like to remove the OPA prior to insertion of the king tube. Others will use the OPA as a guide for the insertion of the king tube. So what you would do is you would turn the king tube, put it to the corner of a patient's mouth, and 
you would use the OPA to insert and you would kind of simultaneously push the king tube in and pull the OPA for the purpose of this demonstration and the size of the mannequin's mouth. We are going to remove the OPA and we will insert the king tube. We are then going to fill the bowl. This is not staying on. Insert 60 cc's of, pardon me, 60 cc's of air. You can see that that is nice and snugly fit into there. There are several ways to ensure the placement of the king tube. Um, the first would be an inline. Uh, capnography in title. So we have that, we will add that in. And we will add our oxygen on. For some reason, all of my equipment is falling apart on me. And there you have it. We'll head in dental education this way. As I said, um, the basic airway adjuncts are to ensure the patency of a patient's airway, whereas the BIAD, the blind insertion airway devices, are used to ensure the patency but also help to adequately oxygenate and ventilate the patient. Um, they are often used for longer transport times. Um, the indication for them is somebody who cannot maintain their own airway uh, patency. Um, as I said, there are several ways to ensure the placement. Um, primarily, we, what we use in my agency are uh, end title, uh, the inline end title. Additionally, so, while somebody is bagging a patient, you can Check lung sounds, auscultate your lung sounds, make sure that you hear the air going in versus, um, versus not. Um, additionally, as for any you know, ventilation of a patient, you can look for adequate chest rise and fall. Um, as for the OG, the oral gastric tube, that is already uh, preloaded. If I could go here, we can insert it into, I don't know where it's gonna go. Well, we would insert it uh, down and it will go into the patient's stomach. Um, we will mark where it goes to on the scale that is listed on it um, and you will listen to uh, sounds, stomach sounds basically to ensure that it is correctly placed. Um, additionally, the OG tube can then be attached to suction um, and attach it to our suction unit as such. and you can turn your suction unit on. You can suction the contents of the patient's stomach out. Uh, the indications, as I said, for the king tube placement are, um, are to adequately ventilate the patient who is unable to adequately maintain their way and ventilate themselves, i.e. breathe normally. Um, obviously with king tube insertion, uh, we wanna make sure that the patient is unconscious um, and also that the patient does not have a gag reflex. Um, I don't believe I have. Um, 
hope that you guys all learned something today and I look forward to teaching you again in the future.